Relationships can really take their toll on you and sometimes we feel completely neglected by our partner and we just don't feel valued or appreciated. And what that can do is build up so much resentment and self-doubt. In this video, I'm actually going to give you some practical tips on what to do if you do feel neglected by your partner in your relationship. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Renee Slansky and that's Luna in the background. I'm a professional dating and relationship coach and I help you build the relationship that you desire and deserve. In this video, I want to talk to those people that are in relationships or maybe you've experienced this in the past where you just feel unappreciated, devalued and neglected by the person that you're married to or that you're involved with. The first thing that I want to say is this is really something that's quite common and the reason why is when you're long term with somebody we get really comfortable and familiar and almost in a routine or if we haven't learned to assert our boundaries early on we kind of just start to feel the toll of that and that person most of the time isn't even aware that they are neglecting you and if you don't actually speak up and do something about it then that cycle will continue to happen and you'll just end up feeling even more disheartened about your situation so here are five quick tips in order to be able to get you back on track to assert your value and communicate to your partner that you really want more from them Number five, rebuild yourself. You know, when we're feeling neglected by someone, we want to kind of just point the finger at them and we want them to fix the problem because they're the ones that cause the problem in the first place. And this is why we have a lot of problems in marriages is because we're pointing the finger at the other person instead of just going, well, I can't control the other person. I can't force them to do something, but how can I control this situation? And that's where the power lies in the beginning is not focusing on, you know, punishing them or trying to communicate to them what they're doing wrong, but rather just kind of taking a step back and rebuilding yourself. Rebuilding yourself first is so incredibly important because when you've been neglected by the person that you're involved with or married to, it is kind of like a form of rejection. Whether they don't want to have sex with you, um, whether they don't, you know, affirm you or say nice things, maybe they don't spend quality time with you, um, especially if your love language isn't being met by that person, we'll tend to feel really crappy about ourselves. We'll probably have low self-esteem, we'll lack confidence, and we won't trust ourselves to be able to make the right decisions because we're just coming from a really low value place. This is why it's incredibly important to build yourself up before you start addressing the problem because it's going to give you um, that kind of confidence to know what to say and how to set and communicate those boundaries. Now, a couple of things that you can do is focus on uh, affirming yourself again. Maybe you're saying two affirmations every single day that affirms who you are and what value it is that you bring to the table. Another thing you might want to do is start to really focus on something that brings you joy, whether it's a project or a hobby or a sport, something that boosts those endorphins and really gives you just you know pleasure in that moment so that you're not constantly focused on the problems all the time. Rebuilding yourself is also surrounding yourself with people who make you feel good, who make you feel celebrated, who do appreciate you, whether that's family, friends, uh, maybe even strangers. Go where you are able to flourish before you start getting all the weeds out of your own garden. The second thing to do is communicate. The reason why a lot of relationships fall apart is because we stop communicating about how we feel or we only communicate about how we feel in a moment of you know, rage or emotion rather than sitting back and actually explaining. One of the best ways to communicate in a marriage or relationship is to explain rather than express because explaining focuses on logic and it also makes it kind of you know subjective, which not me versus you or pointing the finger, it's us versus the problem. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in a relationship and that means talking about things even when you don't want to, even when you're uncertain of the outcome because in order to be able to really bring to light that this person or your partner is making you feel neglected, you have to make them aware of it in the first place. Now, if you know that they're aware of it and they're doing it on purpose, then that's even more of a reason why you need to talk to them about it because you need to make sure that they know that you are you know, communicating your values and boundaries in that relationship so that they don't feel that they can keep walking over you or taking advantage. 
Which brings me to the next point, assert your boundaries. This is a major reason why we feel neglected in a relationship is because we keep giving, giving, giving or stepping back and not saying anything and before you know they've walked all over us and hence why we feel crap. Now I've actually done another video on this about asserting your boundaries so I really recommend that you go and watch that afterwards because it gives you some really practical sort of ways that you can actually assert boundaries in a relationship. Another thing to do is give consequences. People neglect others, um, whether they're aware of it or not. They will continue to do something if you're not actually making them aware of what they're doing in the first place. And if you don't give consequences for their behavior, then basically you're not keeping them accountable to their role in the relationship. Now, this might mean conflict, but conflict, as I've said in previous videos, is incredibly healthy in a relationship. And someone neglecting you is not okay. We all go through different seasons in a relationship. Sometimes neglect happens because the other person is so preoccupied with stress or life or whatever that they don't even realize that they are neglecting their partner. Neglection in a relationship basically means that you don't feel like you're a priority and that you don't feel valued. Sometimes that person isn't aware that they're doing it. And that doesn't mean that they can get off guilt-free. I mean, yes, we should forgive and forget. But again, if you don't set that boundary and give them a consequence for their behavior, then they're just going to keep doing it even if they're sorry. People learn more about how their behavior affects others when they realize that there is a reaction to that behavior. So if you are someone where you feel neglected and you say something and he says sorry and then he just keeps doing and doing it and you just allow it, then basically you're saying that that behavior is okay. Whereas if you're able to say to him, okay, I get it, you're sorry, but you know, from now on, I'm not going to put up with this or I want us to schedule in a date night or I want us to, you know, put your phone away because I feel that you're not communicating with me enough, whatever the issue is, then you're communicating to him that you're not willing to put up with this continuous behavior that makes you feel like crap. Again, this is asserting a boundary in a relationship and a healthy standard in order to be able to keep it thriving. And lastly, plant seeds of love. When we feel neglected or rejected by our partner, we can get really kind of bitter about it and we can just have all this kind of anger towards them build up because they should know better and why don't they treat us better and they should love us more. And if we allow that anger and that bitterness to um, form our decisions, then we're going to be sowing you know, hate into hate you know, or we're going to expect that two wrongs make a right when it doesn't. So my advice is actually sowing seeds of love. Now, this doesn't mean that you're affirming negative behavior and that you're allowing him or her to walk all over you. This is about going, okay, well, what is their love language? How can I take the focus of the lack that they're giving me and make sure that I'm playing my role first? Again, change in a relationship really starts with you doing what you can do with your own self first because... Essentially, we can't control somebody else. So if you can model that behavior, if you can make sure that you're playing your role to the best of your ability, whether it's, you know, filling up their love tank a little bit more, communicating to them so they feel supported, so that they want to then give more back to you, I guarantee you you're probably going to have a much better response rather than just focusing on punishing them. All right, girls and guys, and that's my advice for you. If you want to have any of my free resource, then click the link down below. I've got a whole lot in there for women and men and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss any of my videos and if you have a video that you would like me to do for you simply put it in the comments down below until next time bye from luna bye from me and i will see you really soon